The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, whom you love is ill. But Jesus heard it, and he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after he said this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not with them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus, has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, 
Lord, if he has fallen asleep, will he not be all right? Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring to merely sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called to her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not come into the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up and move quickly out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because it has been four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Word of God, Word of Life Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. One day a passenger in a taxi cab reaches up and taps the driver on the shoulder saying, Hey, buddy. Well, suddenly the driver screams, loses control of the cab, nearly hits a bus, jumps a curb, 
and stopped within inches of a huge plate glass window. For the next several moments, everything is dead still and silent. Finally, the driver breaks the silence by saying, man, you nearly scared me half to death. I'm sorry, said the passenger. I didn't realize that tapping you on the shoulder would scare you so much. Oh, it's not you, said the driver. You see, this is my first day driving a cab. For the last 25 years, I drove a hearse. Well, when somebody is dead, we expect them to stay dead, don't we? Unless, of course, Jesus is in the picture. Many of us know the basics of this story by heart. Jesus is summoned to the home of his good friends, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Lazarus is fatally ill and indeed is dead by the time Jesus arrives. Martha, when she sees Jesus coming, approaches him and says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus sees in her tear-stained face the depth of her grief. In fact, he sees it in not just her face, but the faces of all those who are nearby grieving. He says, where have you laid him? And she says, come and see. And at that moment, Jesus begins to weep, so much so that those surveying the scene say, see how much he loved him. Now, Lazarus' tomb was a cave with a large rock rolled in front of it. Jesus says, remove the stone. Martha protests, Lord, it is already a stench. He's been dead four days. Jesus says to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? So the stone is rolled back. And then Jesus looks up and prays. And then in a loud voice says, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus comes forth. And his arms and his legs are wrapped in cloth. And there's a cloth covering his face. And Jesus says, unbind him and let him go. The obvious message of this story, of course, is that Jesus has the power over death, that he's the resurrection and the life, that he can unbind whomever he wants, not only in this world, but beyond the grave. In other words, this story affirms the idea of the resurrection. That's important. One day, you and I will receive the good news that we've waited for. One day, Jesus will come and say to us, come forth. One day, the dead in Christ will rise again. And we will live beyond the grave with Christ and all those we have ever loved. Dr. A.L. Jenkins was an emergency room doctor for 48 years in Knoxville, Tennessee. In that capacity, he saw both the best and the worst of what medicine had to offer. But he says his most vivid memories are those moments that cannot be medically explained. For example, one day he had a man come in to the emergency room who was dead on arrival. But it was Dr. Jenkins' practice to try to resuscitate anyway. After 10 minutes of CPR, the previously dead man began to show signs of life. Suddenly, he jumped up and he looked around and he said, Oh, I wish I was still there. It was so beautiful. He never fully explained what he meant by that, except he just kept saying the place he was at was so beautiful. So beautiful. Now, there have been many explanations offered for near-death experiences, including chemical changes in the brain. But all excuses aside, isn't it amazing how these experiences affirm what the Bible teaches us about life beyond the grave? That there will come a time when the doctor will no longer be able to do anything for us. And then from the other side, Christ will say, Mike, come out. Sally, come out. Joe, come out. Sarah, come out. This story affirms the notion 
of the resurrection. Now here's another important point that we should understand from this text. Just because you are a friend of Jesus does not mean you won't get your heart broken from time to time. You know, just because we are friends of Jesus, bad things can still happen to us. Just ask Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And when that happens, sometimes we're shocked. We fall into despair. And sometimes we have trouble getting out of it. Earlier generations didn't have all the things that we might have. But it seems to me they were better able to deal with the heartaches of life because they were more familiar with the heartaches of life. I read recently about a custom in some Russian villages long ago in which a mourning hut was built on the outskirt of the village. And this was a time when infant mortality rates were high. And whenever a woman would lose a child, she would go to this hut for a month to be in solitude and grief. And then at the end of the month, the hut was set on fire and the woman had to choose whether she wanted to live or die. If she wanted to live, she came running out of the burning hut. And then she built the hut again for the next mourner. Earlier generations knew that life could be hard. They knew for a fact that sometimes life could be downright cruel. And so they spiritually prepared for such hard times. We, on the other hand, expect life to be relatively pain-free. And we're unprepared when our illusion is shattered. Maybe that's one reason why there's higher diagnoses of depression in our generation. Hard to say. But what we do know is this, just because you are a friend of Jesus doesn't mean you won't get your heart broken from time to time. This is a, a, a notion that even Jesus' close friends, Martha and Mary, had to come to terms with. I mean, Mary was angry with Jesus when she confronts him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And John tells us that Jesus begins to cry when he is confronted with the depth of her pain and grief. And that leads to another important insight from the scripture text. Christ cares about our heartaches and our pain. We don't worship a God who's out there somewhere disengaged from our lives, but rather in Jesus, because of his unique nature as both son of God and son of man, he understands and knows our heartaches and pains. Dr. James Moore tells about a pastor friend of his who has been teased for years over something that occurred the first time he ever led a communion service. He was reading the liturgy from the bulletin and he read this sentence. Hear now from scripture these words of comfort. But then there was a blank space for the pastor to insert a favorite scripture text offering some comfort. But the pastor couldn't recall a single verse. His mind went blank. There was nothing but silence. Finally, the pastor broke the awkward silence by blurting out the only scripture text that would come to mind. He cried out, Jesus wept. Well, it may have been awkward at the time, but that pastor was right, even if he didn't realize it at that moment. Because there are no greater words of comfort and assurance to the believer than to know that Jesus wept. To think that the one who has power over life and death cares about our circumstances. That's why we can entrust our loved ones to his care. Because the one who knows and weeps over our human frailty has the power over sin and death. And yet the truth is, we are never fully prepared for the powerful presence of God to break through into our lives. The Philistines were prepared for everything, except for a little boy with some stones and a slingshot. Pharaoh's army was prepared for everything, except for a wave of water. 
Jericho was prepared for everything except for a marching band and a trumpet. Martha was prepared for everything except for her brother being brought back to life. In fact, Martha would have Jesus hold his nose to block out the stench of death. But Jesus, on the other hand, would have Martha open her arms to welcome her brother back into life. God surprises us and shocks us by God's ability to renew, revive, and restore. And God can shock you in God's ability through Christ to unbind whatever is holding you this day, whether it's addiction, pain, suffering, grief, heartbreak, whatever it is. Jesus has the power to unbind you and call you forth, just as he promises that someday in the future to call you forth, to call you forth on the day of your own resurrection. Amen. These are the prayers of intercession for March 26th, 2023. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You have breathed into us the breath of life. Enliven your church, 
deepen our partnerships with our companion churches around the world and bless the work of missionaries who accompany them. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your spirit brings life to creation, enliven the natural world and restore ecosystems in need of healing. Uplift prophetic voices that turn us to the needs of the soil beneath our feet and the air all around. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You redeem the world and its peoples. Free us from systems of oppression. Unbind nations and societies from the sins of racism, sexism, and homophobia. Raise up leaders at all levels of government who work to promote the dignity of every human life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You weep when we weep. Be present with those who grieve or who are troubled by illness. You hear us when we call you. Deliver us from the depths of our despair and free us from the worries that bind us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your spirit of life dwells in our assembly. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who lead us in hymns of praise and thanksgiving and in songs of lament and prayer. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are the resurrection and the life. Even though we die, we will live. With thanksgiving, we remember all your saints who now live in your eternal love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our well, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.